uh, work of the Spirit of God here this morning. And uh, we praise God for what he did. A marvelous time this morning. And, and, and we're just excited about tonight. I, I'm so excited to have my friend Bruce Carden here and his wife Carmen. Um, Bruce had me to uh, uh, preach a long time ago now, back at East Winfield Church when he was pastored there. He's now pastoring. He retired. Now he's kind of come out of that retirement a little bit. And uh, he's at uh, Midway uh, pastoring there. And so we're, we're grateful for Brother Bruce. And, and uh, he's going to uh, gonna share with us the word tonight. And I, I just want to tell you that it, it really thrills my soul for somebody to get up here and is going to quote the scripture the way he does. It just thrills me. And uh, I'm just grateful. I, is this the third time, I think, maybe, that you've shared with us? Um, and also, by the way, uh, since the last time here, uh, Brother Bruce has written a book, and it's out there in the foyer. If you would like to take a look at that on your way out, uh, he'll be back there. And, uh, and so take a look at the book that he has written. And... Uh, uh, pick you up a copy of it. I think they're $15. Pick up a copy of those on your, on your way out. Uh, one of those, that would be great. All right, let, let me share with you some quick announcements, okay? First of all, uh, I want to remind you that after the service tonight, right here, we'll just get one side or the other. I'll decide um, that after, after the service, for those of you that are interested in the um, mission work that we're going to be doing in, in Eris, um, as we um, embark on this uh, revitalization project that uh, the Lord's laid upon our hearts. And so if you're interested in that, and then what I'm talking about, I'm talking about that we need uh, people that are willing to, the, the beginning parts of this, cutting grass, weed eating, trimming hedges, power washing, cleaning inside, um, and then passing out flyers at some point, and then uh, we're going to have some block parties and, and, and stuff like that. And then we will also be um, having ministry out there on a, on a weekly basis, okay? Uh, and so we're going to need lots of volunteers to take a night. And we're not talking about take every week, but uh, take a week where you'll say, I'll go out there and I'll teach kids tonight, or I'll teach the youth, or I'll teach adults, um, because this cannot be a Wilton Wall Project. And I made that clear from the very beginning. It can't be just me. And so we need lots of help. And so if you're willing, just get some interest, uh, get some information on that. We're going to have that afterwards um, uh, tonight uh, to share with you, okay? Um, also, um, I, I want to remind you of 30 for 30, and that is praying for 30 days uh, for 30 minutes a day heading into our revival. Uh, the sign-up sheet for that is on the mission table, so sign up for that if you're willing to take 30 minutes a day uh, beginning this coming Friday to pray um, and um, for our revival with Brother Bob Pittman coming up September the 17th through the 20th, and we all love Brother Bob, and uh, so be praying for him. Also, cookbooks are ready, and I, I, I'm just amazed. Y'all sold 200 this morning? 200 cookbooks sold this morning. So you better get in there and get them, okay? Uh, maybe you have some orders already on all that. I don't know how that's gone, but get in there and get them after, after the service tonight, okay? Don't forget about the skeet shoot. Kevin, you want to say another word on that tonight? We, we want everybody to attend. Everybody okay, and the date on that? Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Saturday at 3 at o'clock, okay? So... Uh, Anybody, anybody, that's girls, that's men, women, boys, girls, anybody can participate in that, okay? It's going to be a great afternoon, okay? Also, we begged, we pleaded, we begged, we pleaded, we'll beg and plead some more. And that is we need more and more children's workers. Um, during uh, during um, our worship services, uh, we were probably quite overwhelmed even in Sunday school this morning. And uh, so... Help out. Sign up out there if you're willing to help take a, a time um, to serve, okay? In um, twos and threes or during children's church as well, okay? All right. Y'all ready? Amen. Amen? You ready to worship? Let's do it. Let's pray. And then um, 
Brother Larry will come and lead us, and, and uh, then Brother Bruce will come after that, okay? Father, thank you so much for the chance to be able to be here tonight. We thank you for what you've already done this day. And, Father, we pray that you would move. Let your Holy Spirit just take over this place tonight. We pray against the enemy. We pray that, that the enemy would have no room to be able to distract in any way tonight, to disrupt. And Father, that there will be clarity here uh, in the way that you speak to us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for um, uh, Bruce as he'll be sharing it tonight. Be with him as he shares. Anoint him uh, in the sharing of your word tonight. We pray we'll respond the way we need to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand with me, if you will. We're going to begin something a little different tonight, but to begin with holy ground. Sing it with me. This is holy ground. We're standing.
roar. Let the earth shake beneath me. Let the mountains fall. You are God over the storm, and I am yours. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again, and I want us to pray specifically for Brother Bruce right now as he'll come and share the Word of God with us. Lord, thank you for what you've already done here. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely we know that you're here. And I pray right now that you would anoint Bruce as he quotes the Scripture to us. May we listen. May we just respond to the Word of God, the precious, precious Word of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, Bruce. Thank you, Brother Wilton, and thank you, church, for allowing me to be here. This is the third time I've been able to be here. I don't know what, three or four years ago, I came for the first time, and uh, and uh, I'm glad to be here again. If you'll pause just a moment, I'm a little nervous, and <laughs> I just want to shake it off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> but anyway, uh, <clears throat> I brought my wife with me tonight. She is not only my uh, little darling, but she's also my support and helpmate for this. Um, there's become a problem with the communication. I would just put it this way. My wife has gotten where she talks to herself all the time. She thinks she's talking to me. And uh, I'm just not hearing it anymore. So she's going to try to help tonight. The problem is I'm not sure if I'm going to hear the clues that she's going to give me tonight if I need those things. But I'm glad to be here and be a part of this. Um, if the Lord wills, we'll look at 1 John and then we'll go into 2 John if I can remember that. And if not, then we'll just stop with 1 John, but we'll see what the Lord has to do. Let's begin with 1 John here. <clears throat> and let me say that I will be in the King James, but also have just a little mixture of the new King James with that as well. So if you're following it, you'll catch some of those things. And on. <clears throat> that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write I unto you, that your, and these things write we unto you, that your fellowship also may be with the Father, and with the Son. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him, and keeps not his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keeps his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. 
brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The, the old commandment is a word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. He that said that he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they no doubt would have continued with us, but they went out that it might be made manifest they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the, is the Christ? He is any Christ who denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise he has promised us, even eternal life. That which we, those, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Anyone that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither they that love not their brother. And this is the message which we have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and murdered his brother. And wherefore murdered he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my children, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. But whoso has this world's good and see his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? 
And now, little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keeps his commandment dwells in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we should live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loves him that begat loves him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which is testified of his Son. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believes not God has made him a liar because he believes not that, the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life and that you might believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he should pray for it. 
All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not, but he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth for the true sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from him that we love one another. Help me out. And now I beseech thee, now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. For this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, that we should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into this world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we receive not those things which we have wrought, but that we re lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses uh, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not gone, but he that but he that abideth in Christ he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine and receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bids him God's speed is partaker of his evil deed. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto thee and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. If you would permit me, permit me just a minute, I want to say just a little bit about the Word of God. May I do that, brother? And uh, let me grab my Bible. I want to hold my Bible. I meant to bring it with me. But um, <clears throat> thank, thank you, brother. <clears throat> this is the Bible, the Word of God. It is precious to us. I believe it is the authority of the life of every believer. Yes. We ought to hold it dearly in our life and on. Back in the 90s, which many of you were not born back then, some of you were and all, but uh, back in the 90s, 1980s, that is, there was a thing called Master Life. Brother, I don't know if you remember Master Life. But Master Life had a teaching where they did a 13 course, a 13 week training on, on Master Life and included that was a section on the Bible and they took the hand. Many of you may have seen the hand. Probably in the, somewhere around 2000, there was another pastor who took Master Life and he tried to rebring it back into it. And I want to give just a minute about the Word of God using that hand, if I may. If you remember it, it'll just be uh, recalled. If you don't, it'll be something new. And, um, but you know, we need the Word of God, and there needs to be in our life the exposure of the Word of God. Think about how you get the Word of God into your life and what that means to your life. You know, the very first thing that we are able to do with the Word of God is we hear the Word of God. If you just think about that for a minute, we hear the Word of God. Long before you ever was able to read, I was hoping maybe there was somebody who was reading the Word of God to you. I really think our moms and dads and our grandmoms and granddads who take opportunity to just take the word, turn the TV off, turn the phones off and the other things that are on, and just take the word of God and read the word of God. And let it be a part, a vital part of your children's life. Read the word of God. Read it with your family and all. 
The second thing that we do, or, or excuse me, we hear the Word of God. We hear the Word of God. The second thing we do, is, so the first one is that we hear the Word of God, so we hear it when our parents read it. The second thing we do is we come to the read the Word of God. And we come to a place where we can read the Word of God for ourselves. We look into the Word of God, and we begin to enjoy that and all. And I want to tell you, there's a lot of fascinating stories in the Word of God. And it is dynamic truth in the Word of God. It is truth. And so read the Word of God. Let it be a daily part of your life where you have that family devotion, where you have that private time, where you have that quiet time, and you read the Word of God. And then after you hear the Word of God and you read the Word of God, then you move up and you study the Word of God. And we need to get into the Word and study the Word of God. I have to tell you that my wife here, my bride here, she is a student of the Word of God. Uh, she, she's in the Word of God all the time. She's studying it. She's reading it. She's studying it and those things. And it, it shows in her life, too, when it comes to the Word of God. And then another thing that we need to do is what I have done tonight. We need to memorize the Word of God. I'm not telling you need to memorize a whole book or anything like that. Just let God lay upon your heart. God lays upon my heart to do this, and so I do this, okay? But memorize. Uh, when we were young, our children were really required, and I would say they were more encouraged to memorize the Word of God. We did a lot of things with our home with our children. We had family devotions. Now, we didn't keep it long, you know. We kept it short for them, but we said, but they would memorize the Word of God. Lots of ways that parents can do that. We might would take a book like maybe uh, Psalms 23 or 1 Corinthians 13, and I would learn a verse, my wife would learn a verse, and one of the kids would learn a verse, and we'd go around till we get it all down, and we would share around circles, sharing that verse we learned that way. Memorize the Word of God. I have to tell you that I have a son that uh, his, he is pursuing, once again, the memory of the Word of God. He has memorized the book of James and the folk, and part of the book of 1 Peter. And what he's doing now is he's taking sections, topic sections, and memorizing Scripture that way. Uh, he and his family are doing those things. Uh, my daughter-in-law has a hard time to listen to her quote. She learns everything in Spanish, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, but they learn, they memorize the Word of God. And then the last thing we need to do is, or next last thing to do, we need to meditate upon the Word of God. We need just to bring that thing over and over in the heart and mind. Let the Word of God be real to us because uh, we need to meditate upon it. I want to tell you, when I memorize the Word of God and I start meditating upon that, Satan can hurl his dart. And I want you to know I have something I can go to. That is the Word of God. God brings it to my heart and to my mind. I'm not telling you that I always have victory. But I'm telling you, though, there would be a lot of times I wouldn't have victory because the Word of God is there, and He's empowering that within our life when we use that. And then the last thing that we need to do, guess what it is? We need to apply the Word of God right here. Because think about that. If you just have the hearing and the reading of the Word of God, just think about how good of a grasp you can get on your Bible, you know? It, it would be hard to carry your Bible that way. But I want you to know, if you got it all together, you can get a good grasp on your Bible. And I'm talking about the grasp that you have it on your life. Because it doesn't matter if we can hear, if we can read, if we can study, if we can memorize, if we can meditate. If we're not applying the Word of God to our life, it is just no good to us. It becomes judgment, really, in a sense, to us. And so let us apply the Word of God to our life. Don't let the Word of God... Don't let your life be something that you're trying to get the Word of God to adjust to your life, but let your life be adjusted to the Word of God by the power of the indwelling Spirit within you if you are a child of God. I just want to say the Word of God is precious. We need that Word, and I thank God for His Word to us. Brother Wilton, come please, sir. Thank you, brother. From John that they would read that letter in one setting they would read it to the church family and we've just had that letter presented to us tonight two letters from the Apostle John the Apostle is all about 
the love of Jesus, the love of God. What I want to encourage you to do, and I'm going to do the same thing myself. He said, we need to take the word of God and meditate upon it. So what I'm going to encourage you to do this week, we've, we've had the, the word shared with us tonight. Will you take 1 John? You can do it in five days. You can take a chapter a day. Would you read 1 John this week? And take one of those chapters and read it and meditate on it. Just think over it. Pray over it. God, how, how, how are you speaking to me? So we, we follow that up. We really all do that every week anyway. We follow up what we have heard tonight by meditating upon it. So will you do that? I encourage you to do that. Start tomorrow and you'll be done with 1 John on Friday. But, but do that this week in addition to the other things that you're doing in reading the Word. Um, I want you to bow your heads and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so um, reminded that right now that I don't have to say anything else <laughs> because the word of God has been spoken. So I'm going to ask you right now just to spend a few moments just right there saying, God, I, I need to renew my commitment to the word of God as, as, it's been, as we've been challenged to do tonight. So would you do that right now? And maybe in just a moment we're going to we're gonna we're gonna sing, but we're gonna sing something different. <laughs> I'm gonna throw something different out there in just a second. But we're gonna do something a cappella, and it's a song we've already sung tonight. And but but right now, would you just take a few moments right now in the presence of God in this place? Say thank you, God, for speaking to me tonight and for challenging us regarding the Word of God. Will you recommit your life right now to being a student of the word. God help us to do that. If you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ to be your Lord and Savior, John said, I have written these things so that you may know. 1 John 5, 13, I have written these things so that you may know. Do you know that you have eternal life? If not, right now, you place your faith and trust. You, you, you give your life to Christ right now in this moment. As we close, I want us to sing. Brother Forrest can pull the words up, I think, for it. Surely... The presence of the Lord is in this place. Uh, and we're singing a cappella. When we were in Africa, one of the special moments that we had, we were in the mission house. I think it was Monty. Monty had the devotional. And he said, God has moved in such a marvelous way. Can we not sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place? And we sang it right there in the mission house in Africa. I don't know how it sounded, but I know it was sweet in the presence of God. And so what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask everybody to stand. Brother Larry, you kind of step up here if you would to lend your voice here rather than me leading this. And let's sing this. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place.
time to him. That is a good way to close the day. God has moved in this place today. Today, tonight, and I thank God for what he's done. Thank you, Brother Bruce, for sharing with us the way that you have. Brother Bruce is going to be out in the foyer. You can greet him out there. And if you want to check on a copy of his book, what's the title of it? God, our provider. That's what I thought it was, but I forgot. I don't have a memory like you, okay? And uh, so God, God, our provider, okay? And so check that out. Don't forget about your cookbooks and all that. And then also the Eris Ministry Meeting. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to meet right up here. And we got more than what we got for the choir, then we'll come out here, okay? So uh, if you're interested in that meeting, hang, hang around afterwards, okay, for that. I won't keep you long, I promise, okay? Um, let's pray. Father, thank you for the way you've worked tonight. We love you. We praise you. We exalt your name. We thank you for your word. And may each one of us now be challenged by what we have heard in 1 John and 2 John. And now go back this week and reflect on it even more. Thank you for Bruce, Carmen. Thank you for their ministry. Continue to bless them and use them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.